is KGW News at Sunrise. Now at six, congressional leaders are returning to the White House. But can they strike a deal with the president to end the government shutdown? It's now wrapping up its second week. And erupting in flames, a fire destroys three semi-trucks at a mechanic shop in southeast Portland. You know, for years, malls were anchored by department stores, but that's becoming a thing of the past. So we're going to let you know how Lloyd Center is adapting to the brand new retail environment. Plus, comedian Kevin Hart sits down for his first interview since stepping down as host of the Oscars. Because I know who I am. I know I don't have a homophobic bone in my body. I know that I've addressed it. I know that I've apologized. And we have a preview of Ellen's exclusive interview. And just in time for the NFL playoffs, Amazon is launching a new Alexa feature to help answer any of your pretty basic football questions. <laughs> Good morning. We'll take a look at your Friday morning commute. It is quiet out there. You can see no delays on any of our freeways. Things look really good on I-5 southbound coming out of Vancouver. And in the gorge, we do have a car fire on I-84 westbound. This is west of Hood River, just a few miles west of Hood River. Uh, not causing any huge delays, but just something to be aware of. All right, Lacey, uh, clearly in for Chris McGinnis on this Friday morning. Rod Hill having a great day so far. I'm barely in for myself. Let me tell you. <laughs> the, five yeah, the five five o'clock hour oh, feature, you running funny. in here, <laughs> losing your breath. And then later in the hour, you almost tripped over one of those long cable cords that connect our cameras. Be careful. What do you got for us this hour, Rod? I'm going to walk very walk carefully. <laughs> walk slowly. Please, please come with me. You know, the rain we had last night, that's pretty much over now we have the scattered showers behind it pretty good visibility from our rose city camera winds that were a little breezy overnight those have already calmed down as well so to the bus stop we go should be a quiet friday 45 degrees out the door eight o'clock some scattered showers continue to be possible but i bet most schools at lunchtime recess and even walking home today in the neighborhood probably don't find any rain and temps will be at about 50 degrees here is the doppler radar right now you see the main push of moisture in the cascades snow level right now at 4,000 feet your complete weekend forecast shortly. Okay, thank you, Rod. I have never had so much support as I have in the last week over my stance for border security. President Trump preparing to go head to head with the new Democrat majority in the House. Today, he'll host congressional leaders at the White House as the government shutdown enters its 14th day. The newly sworn in Congress got right to work yesterday. Last night, they passed two bills that would reopen the federal government, but neither of those bills include paying for the president's border wall, and they are not expected to pass the Senate. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi isn't budging. And this is not a wall between Mexico and the United States that the president is creating here. It's a wall between reality and his constituents. Today's meeting between the president and congressional leaders will be the second one this week. In the meantime, 800,000 federal workers are either off the job or working without pay. So when we talk about those affected, that includes most of the U.S. Forest Service, TSA workers, the Coast Guard, and federal law enforcement. So local employees tell us they're just super frustrated about it. We talked to Travis Ray and Nathaniel Weber, who work at the federal prison in Sheridan. They haven't been paid at all during the shutdown. But unlike some furloughed employees who are told to stay home, these two are among thousands of officers who still have to show up for work. And I understand the risks of I can be hurt every day. I can watch a staff member be hurt. You know, I put myself in that line of duty um, and I look forward to getting a paycheck with it. Now I get to look forward to coming to work, possibly being assaulted and not getting paid for it. Both men say they don't support the shutdown. They say the government shouldn't be using federal employees as bargaining chips. We'll continue to bring you any new developments in the government shutdown. You can also find updates anytime on KGW.com or the KGW mobile app. It is 6.04 this morning. The Portland Fire Department now looking for a new leader. Chief Mike Myers unexpectedly upside. resigned yesterday, just one day after his new boss was sworn into office. Myers took this photo with new city commissioner Joanne Hardesty Wednesday night. She will oversee the fire bureau. Myers says he's going to move to Gearhart where his wife lives and he'll work as an emergency manager in Cannon Beach. Commissioner Hardesty tells us she was really caught off guard by this, but she understands it was a personal decision. I think Mike and I would have worked very well together over the next 20 years, no question. Uh, but, you know, if your heart's in retirement and living at the beach, you know, I, I, can't, I can't compete with that, right? 
Myers joined the Fire Bureau in 2016. The Bureau says he modernized the operation and made safety a top priority by securing money for much needed equipment. An interim chief hasn't been named yet. We have some wild fire video to share with you this morning. Five minutes after six o'clock now. Take a look at this. You see the fire there. It took over a, a repair shop in southeast Portland and it actually took over three different semi trucks. So this happened early yesterday morning at VH Truck Service on Southeast Foster. A mechanic was showing up for work there. As he pulled in, he saw the fire, called 911. No one else was around when it actually started. So fortunately, workers were able to move a fourth big rig before that one caught on fire too. Probably today was the first time when I experienced what real shock is. You don't know where to go, what to do, who to call. So besides those three semi trucks that were damaged, the fire also damaged a van and a pickup truck at the service shop. Shop mechanics say insurance should cover all the damage. Portland Fire, meanwhile, continues to investigate exactly what caused that fire. It is six after six now. It's time for your morning rush. Investigators in Houston have released a sketch of the man, the suspected gunman wanted for killing a seven year old girl. Officials believe this is the man who pulled up alongside a car that Jasmine Barnes was riding in with her family. They say the man fired into the vehicle, killing the little girl. Barnes is black and her family thinks the shooting was racially motivated. Her death has gained national attention recently and several professional athletes are now donating to the family. Seven people are dead after a fiery crash in Florida. This happened yesterday afternoon on Interstate 75 near Gainesville. Wow, police say around 50 gallons of diesel spilled onto the highway, which fed the fire. The former U.S. Marine arrested in Russia has now been formally charged with espionage. Authorities took 48-year-old Paul Whelan into custody last Friday. The government, the Russian government, hasn't released any details about the allegations against him, but Whelan's family says he is innocent. A tropical storm is making landfall in southern Thailand. It's bringing torrential rains, winds up to 50 miles per hour, and waves as high as 15 feet. The storm is hitting tourist areas particularly hard, and thousands Thousands fled ahead of time. That is your morning rush. All right, the time now is 607. You know, Portland's Lloyd Center has been around since 1960. <laughs> next year will be its 60th anniversary, and next year will also be a year of big change at Lloyd Center. Absolutely. Many of Lloyd Center's big national chain stores and restaurants are on the way out. Marshall's is closing, and Applebee's already has. Experts say we can expect more closures in the future as the push to shop local takes off. It's a challenging environment with large retailers, a lot of big box stores going out of business, so you kind of have to do that. And I think it's uh, they've got a bright future because they have a lot more residential activity in this market, a lot of apartments, and so they need to find things to make this more like Portland, more local and less national. Other changes at Lloyd Center include a new live music venue that's expected to open in 2020. It's not just the mall either that's changing. There is a lot of development planned for the surrounding neighborhood. For instance, next fall, a 12 story affordable housing apartment complex is set to open a few blocks away. You know, you never want to mm. see really any businesses close big or small because mm -hmm jobs are lost, sure. but I yeah. do like seeing more local stuff yeah. get, getting more popular. I, I feel guess. like Marshall's was almost already closed. If you've ever been in there in Lloyd Center, it's super sparse and oh, it needs it? an Quiet. injection yeah. Yeah. of something. Revamp. I yep. was thinking though, I mean, how many malls in this country have been around for 60 years? I right. mean, most malls yeah. do not last that long, exactly. like, especially an old school one like Lloyd Center. So it's good that they're able to adapt and hopefully yeah. that'll show a difference next year. Yeah. 